and it's going to be Chris Rassman who is uh, dropping in first. I mean, just power. Absolute power. Power and flex. Showed himself last year. Incredible fourth place at Alaska. Happy to be back. Here's Chris. Should I ratchet it up, Kinger? Being able to compete at all three events last year, even already knowing what I know about how different those three venues would be, really solidified the fact that for a rider to be able to do well at all three events and win the final one really is one of the best all-round backcountry snowboarders in the world because they are drastically different and all require a whole different set of skills and a whole different set of experience. Going head-to-head -head with Travis last year was kind of a trip. I, uh, I picked him because he stole my water bottle and I didn't want to throw Blake under the bus. But yeah, he's my friend and we've known each other for years. He's helped me out a lot. So going head-to-head -head with him was kind of weird, um, but it was a lot of fun. I definitely saw a serious side of Travis that I personally haven't seen yet, though. An astute speaker. Well, there you go. You can hear the FPVs. It's in the rider's ear. And I, I just get the feeling with Chris Rassman, I think he is very well equipped to do well in these snow conditions on this course. Another thing of note is Chris last year on the tour, him and Robin Van Jin are the only riders who rode at all three stops. So Chris starting things off with a huge front side three. And you can tell, knowing Chris Rasman as I do, he's being a lot more calculated about his run and controlling his speed. That backside three was nasty. Well, he's definitely exhibiting a much more of a flow, much more of a consistent run, no falls, as opposed to Dustin and Danny. You know, at, at the selection event, Tra Travis said, it ain't going to be the sendiest person that wins uh, this year. It's going to be the, the person who's able to find harmony with what the terrain and conditions are. And right when I said won't be the sendiest, Chris was like, watch this. You know, knowing what we know about Dustin's score with a fall, you know, Dustin coming in at a 75.6, I, I still think this is going to be a very high high scoring run for Chris Rasmus. Risk, right? He did, oh again, falling God. in the midst of a of, of real risk. Yep. That's what gave I'm Mikhail lasting. Bang the win up in Alaska, and it could pay off here. Well, I got to say, the back three that Chris just put down in the middle of his run is right up there with Dustin's nose bonk on the tree. That's the tricks of the day. But again, we, this is just the beginning. Well, again, uh, we mentioned Jared Elson said he wasn't afraid. Talk a little bit of trash. But let's uh, get in his head right. as he finds his music. Yeah, I got the text from Liam, and my, my heart just dropped. I was like, is this really happening? And Sure enough, it was, and now I'm here. It's crazy. I mean, walking into the hotel and Travis Rice is sitting right there, and he kind of shoots you a glance, and you're like, "Jesus, here we go." <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was cool. Got up to the course today, and I was really scared. Like when we first drove in, it, it looked mangled from town. But uh, we got in the course today, and snow was surprisingly good. I saw Jared this morning at, uh, at coffee, and he said, you know what, I was raised in conditions like this uh, in Oregon, so I'm not really intimidated. And he's also said, I got a really great night's sleep, so I like my chances. I like that. I mean, Jared Elston is a explosive snowboarder. This kid is a unique talent, and he is the next generation of backcountry snowboarders ready to take the reins. Well, he's also got a little fire. I mean, obviously from the... Uh selection event you some call uh, Chris Rasman an old head so you got to take it personal when Rasman calls you out like that and chooses to go against you in the early round a little backside three he's on fire right now and coming up short on another backside 360 Jared Elston making his way down the course I like the flow yeah He's picking a, a pretty similar line to Rasman, but you could tell he's definitely being conservative with that speed. Off the great wall, huge side three from Jared Elston, <laughs> capping Woo. off a pretty stellar run. Yeah. He said, T-Bird, did you say conservative? <laughs> 
Well, we're trying to find him. He's taking a unique approach to get into the bottom, but he's got to be stoked on that run. There was a the little ball ball about a third of the way down, but definitely more than made up for it towards the bottom. How about that? You're 23 years old. <laughs> It's your first invite. You're all, you all—you told us in the interview how shook he was. It was kind of crazy, eh? And then it's like, all right, this is my moment. Let's go. Oh lord, that is exciting. Good job on Great Wall, dude. That well, and you hear how winded they are at the end of this run as we're taking a look here at Chris Rasman. There's a frontside 360 on his first hit of his first run. And I feel like so far, out of all the riders we've seen, I, I really feel like Rasmin rode this course the best. Backside 360 from Chris Rasmin right there. Well, I mean, it is. I mean, I'm happy I'm not a judge because frankly, I thought those two runs were pretty comparable. And here is where things kind of unraveled pretty quickly for Rasmin. You see, you can punch through that crust and catch your nose really easy in snow conditions like this. But all in all, a really solid run from Chris Rasmin. And that right there, I mean, if you say the name Chris Rasmussen, the first thing I think is just a textbook backside seven. He has that trick so dialed. And here we go. Is this still Chris or is no, this is Jared? Good? Yeah. Front side 360 there. And you can see a little chatter on that toe edge when, when Jared tries to dump a little bit of speed. And it seemed like kind of mid course, he really slowed things down quite a bit. And this just goes to show how quick this snow moves. He was crawling off the Great Wall and he landed halfway down the landing on that front side 360. Yeah, that's a really good point. He, he literally like speed checked and took his time into that. How about that adjustment in the landing? I mean, you could see how hard that snow is just on that, just in that reverb in slow motion. So weird. On TV. Really close right there with the scores. All right. You called it. Jared Elson. Thanks, Mark, dude. Thanks, bro. Let's go get another. Let's do it. Overall impression, we just uh, the, okay. put a big capital R on risk. We head into Chris Rassman. Finds himself in the same position as Danny D. Well, you got to think some of the riders in the tent right now are changing their approach based upon how the judging just mm. went. 100%, absolutely. I think there was a huge shift in ideology in that rider field as Chris Rassman drops in in the passenger seat with Jared Elston currently behind the wheel. And for perspective, just Give, give context to who's in that judges booth for the for the folks at home. We got Sandy McDonald, one of the most esteemed judges in the world. He's judged some of the biggest contests in snowboarding. We have the legendary Chad Otterstrom and another world-renowned judge, Connor Manning. They are tasked with the unenviable job of judging these runs. Chris Rassman, backside 360, kind of sits it down into the front side three, stomps that very clean. Well, landings definitely are starting to show a lot of character now. They're definitely starting to get ridden in. Um, there is some fresh landing out there. You just got to find it. So Rasmund coming into the Great Wall switch. Cab five puts it down super clean. Chris Rasmund just fired a shot across the bow of Jared Elston. And look at the way he powers through that, that muddy snow. He is a powerful snowboarder. Well, that's going to improve upon and his Bobby. first run, I would assume. We, we heard uh, Rasmus say it's getting bumpy. It's getting bumpy. All right, if you're uh, if you're Jed Elson and you, and you had that first run where you're like, all right, I had nothing to lose. Yeah, he's bringing it. <laughs> but he knew that Rasmus was going to step up. I mean, that cap five. Yeah, That was a thing of beauty. This kid right here, though, he's called Big Air Jer for a reason, and a very good one. There we have Rob Kingwell, Jackson local. Kinger! U.S. Open champion in the start right there. Kinger! Yeah, he's up in the Temple of Stoke. Kinger in the shadows! 
Yeehaw. What a legend. Hell right. <laughs> I mean, just, I couldn't imagine the emotion of coming out of that, that starter tent and then just into that beautiful expanse of Jackson and the sun shining on you and you're at natural selection. And you have to imagine, you know, these riders that are now taking their second runs have a little bit more confidence because at least they know what the snow conditions are and they know what to expect, what's around each turn on this course. Big old straight air up and over an entire tree into a method. Unique line right there kind of pioneering some parts of the left side of the rider's right course. And look at that front side turn. This kid's a product of Mount Bachelor, Oregon. They know how to turn snowboards up in Bend, Oregon. So a wildcat, nose over tail backflip. And Elston is definitely taking a different line than his first run. Yeah, it's how you approach this kicker right here that's gonna line you up for the fresh parts of the land. Big old front side three, landing in the tracks, powering through. This is gonna get really interesting. Wild. Oh, that is a hell of a Apologies for the foul language. Good work. Way to keep it together. How bumpy is it, guys? It's crazy. Yeah. I almost fell on the end run of the Great Wall. My condolences to the next riders. <laughs> and, uh, Yo. <laughs> fam, love you, Dad. <laughs> Elston is a comedy show. As we're taking a look at the recap here, beautiful front three by Chris Rassman, and then a powder cloud from the heavens. There is good snow to be had out there. It's just knowing where to find it. Backside 360, and Chris unfortunately sits it down check out that front three. He went back to back mid course. I mean, that right there is risk. And here is where Rasman said he almost fell coming in switch. Yeah, you saw that that little bobble that in that lead in, but did not lose focus. Now let's compare him. Front three tail. Jared just has such a unique way of rotating when he spins front side. It's, it's really fun to watch. And then a huge straight air just barely catching transition in that landing into a method. So again, back-to-back -back hits mid-course from Jared Elston. Similar risk. But here is where he caps it all off. Front side 360 stomped. Huh. He was carrying a slight advantage into that one. So 3.7 points was the differentiation. I also like that, that, that knock need kind of surfy style. Yeah. Me too. Ooh, oh, oh, oh. oh. My man, well deserved. Thank you, Chris. Good job. So one, two, two eliminations already. Danny Davis up, gone. Man? Chris Rassman up, gone. The younglings, <laughs> the younglings have come to play.